Hi guys, different location, different job for us today, ponies. Uh, we're looking at electric fences. Now, uh, most of you are probably looking at this rolling your eyes. If you've gone to this video because you know about ponies, you're probably rolling your eyes as well. But uh, electric fences, no different from any other circuit. So the negative leg of your circuit is there, the positive leg is the fence. So the key here is to keep that middle line in this case, the electrified bit, away from the ground or away from anything that may become ground. For example, that post is probably a fairly good uh, insulator at the moment, but once it gets wet and that piece of string there gets wet, it will conduct electricity which will drop the fence. Uh, you don't want to terminate into metal like that and you want to break large systems up like this as much as you can. So we've got many, many paddocks down here on what was two energizers, will now be one and a lot of it is just wrap round or like some of it over here um if i can find it was run under the path uh yeah just down by the bottom of the post there you can see a wire that would have run over there and from an electrician's point of view um the best way to do this um, and probably flies in the face of uh, convention knowledge is to have this so you can isolate as much as possible so up here, for example, let's go for a walk around here. So we've got an energizer here that's been killed by a lightning strike and we're trying to work around that. Um, but we've got a problem on this side now. So there is an earth short somewhere. So what we've done is we've jumped over, but we've used the conductive handles like that. Now this means that this side is still pumping out 10 kV. This side, when we connect it, draws that down to three. Hello, pony. Um, so now we know by taking this off, taking this off, and that side jumping back up to 10, that we've got a problem over here. And actually, it's over there in that corner. That's what I'm about to do. So by building a large fence system like this so you can isolate it, um, you're doing what electricians will normally do and giving yourself a system whereby you can take chunks out and narrow the fault down. So we now know we've got a fault on this side. That side's fine. That side far end isn't fine, but I know what it is. It's a bad jumper um, or the fence has been done in a way that doesn't allow it to be jumpered properly. So um, yeah. I think that's our top tip here. Treat it like a normal electronic circuit. You've got positive and negative. You need to keep them as far apart as you can. Um, a short um, on high voltage is a lot easier to do than uh, it is on low voltage. It will jump over damp posts and things like that. And trees, I'd forgot. I need to go and sort that out in a minute. Um, so we want to keep that uh, from happening. And obviously if we have it so you can break circuits up, then... Uh, that allows us to isolate things. That's the feed from the old energizer. Um, there was a lightning strike down here, which is toasted. Uh, it's to I don't know if it's toasted the energizer. The energizer's in the back of that. Um, but certainly the one over on the, on the uh, landowner's ducks has uh, been scattered across the car park. Um, but I think it's taken the main supply over here out, which is why this energizer's dead. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, break it. Do it as a normal electrical circuit and break it into chunks so you can isolate bits. Anyway, take care.